Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys we're going to be analyzing once again the company Adobe. Now I'm doing this for two reasons guys. Well I, technically three. The first one is that the last time I did this I had a crappy mic and um, I do not want you guys to be listening to that disgusting mic again. It's absolutely horrendous. The second one is that well their earnings guys is actually coming up tomorrow after close so I kind of want to see how this company does on top of doing a stock analysis and of course with their earnings the third one is that i actually put out a community poll asking hey adobe's earnings are on thursday would you guys like me to do an earnings report a stock analysis or both and well essentially 77 percent of you actually chose both so we're going to cover the stock analysis today and tomorrow when it comes out we'll take a look at the report as well and then we'll actually take a look back at the assumptions that i made today and see if maybe we would like to change things up knowing new information so with that said let's get started with this analysis all right guys we're going to start off with the calculator this company does not pay out a dividend and well, just because a company doesn't pay out a dividend, guys, doesn't mean that it's a bad company to buy. It just means that you better hope that they're at least growing that free cash flow as well as buying back those shares. So that way, your shares that you already own actually grow in value. Now, ticker symbol of ADBE, market cap of $174 billion, with a current PE, guys, of 36.29, and a current share price of $371.52. So, based off of just the PE alone, off of their earnings, is telling me that with this current share price it is very much overvalued now this is being that we don't buy it not necessarily what basically this is telling us is okay we need to actually look into this a little bit deeper because if a company is growing their cash flow consistently their revenues and their incomes consistently and buying back shares we may actually want to buy a company with a little bit of a premium if that means that in the next couple years this premium will essentially be erased by all of their cash flow that they're currently bringing that's essentially what this is telling me now guys i'm actually looking at the one that i made in i believe june of this year and the share price back then guys was 376 dollars so things have actually gone down i mean even just as of yesterday we saw a massive massive collapse in all of the markets with the nasdaq falling the most which this company is part of bringing this company from around 396 dollars to like 379 and then it kept collapsing throughout the day reaching a bottom of around 368 dollars so yeah i mean we're essentially in the same spot that we were what three months ago in june today so let's actually see if things have changed when it comes to my assumptions now as i said they don't pay out the dividend which means that all of this free cash flow which is a lot guys is in the 4.5 billion within the five year average and almost 7 billion on the last years it's all going back into themselves so we are probably going to see some great 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 fundamentals especially in that share buyback so now let's actually come over here guys to the fundamentals starting of course with the net income we got five years ago of 1.7 billion to one year ago of 4.8 billion dollars increase of 185 percent now looking at this graph guys this actually is looking very good however there are a couple inconsistencies here well for starters five to three years ago really really nice right consistent increase and well during covid they did a massive jump going from three billion dollars three years ago to 5.3 billion dollars two years ago now this is usually the anomaly because during covid companies tend to dip a little bit not jump but seeing guys this is a software company what were people doing during covid right probably photoshop video editing right all this stuff so programs that adobe had probably that's the reason why people bought them because they were like we have excess amount of money i want to do stuff i want to start like a hobby and making youtube videos or i want to make a hobby and like photoshop or i want to whatever right so i think that's the reason why we saw a massive jump here and as you can see they did come down at one year ago to 4.8 billion dollars so this probably because of the fact that they're probably no longer getting that revenue though i believe and correct me if not i do believe that photoshop and like video editor for whatever it's called i think it's like premiere or something like that i think it's like a monthly payment like a monthly subscription to keep it so if that's the case then that essentially explains as to why they kept roughly at around like the 4.8 billion dollar 5 billion dollar mark one year ago so for that reason guys i'm actually going to give this i can't give this lower than a 70 percent because it is increasing we do see pretty good increases too but this jump kind of concerns me and this dip kind of concerns me as well so for that reason i'm going to go with like a 75 percent 
Coming down to the free cash flow, guys, the most important of all the profit metrics, because this is the one that companies use to essentially do everything. Buy back shares, pay down debts, pay out the dividend, make acquisitions, etc. Come up with like new projects, grow the company in general. So very, very important, guys, for this thing to be consistently increasing. Now, we got five years ago of 2.7 billion to one year ago of 6.9 billion. So let's just bring it up to seven, right? Seven billion dollars. Guys, that is a massive increase of 152 percent with an average of 4.5 billion dollars. And on top of that, guys, take a look at this graph. It is just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Every single year, consistent increase every single time, and is actually fairly consistent. Now we do see a jump here from three years ago to two years ago, but we saw the same thing right here. So I think that's explainable with the exact same reason I gave. And we see something interesting too, that essentially one year ago, they did not come down like they did with the net income. They actually increased it again. So that's actually really, really good. For all those reasons, guys, because it's not consistently growing, like you do see a little bit of jumps here and here, I can't give it like a perfect score, but I'm still gonna give it like a 95%. It is a very, very good looking free cash flow. And the goodness does not stop. Looking now at the revenue, we got 7.3 billion to 15.8 billion dollars, increase of 116.2%. And guys, this is looking even better than that of the free cash flow. This is what I call staircasing here. Every single year, perfectly consistently increasing. I'm gonna give this one guys a 100%. Looking now into the balance sheet numbers of assets and liabilities. Let us take the assets, subtract the liabilities, and see if hopefully the assets do cover their liabilities. Because if they don't, then we have a little bit of a problem. Now, currently, they're at $14 billion. And if we take a look at the past five years, this is looking amazing too, consistently increasing as well. Now, we do see that as of today, they're not up to what they were one year ago of $14.8 billion. But I don't believe that this year for them is over yet, so they may actually still surpass it, hopefully. But just from what I'm looking at now, I can't give it a 100%, but I'm gonna give it a fairly good score. This is looking absolutely amazing. Average total assets is around $22 billion. Average liabilities is only 10.3 billion. Guys, take a look at this. The average assets is $22 billion. The average liabilities doesn't even get to like half of that so that's actually amazing to see right it's absolutely gorgeous 10.3 billion dollars and doing this difference we get 11.7 billion dollars that is insane guys absolutely insane i'm actually going to give this a very good score one, one more time of like 97 percent i honestly do think that they are able to bring this current one higher than one year ago so when they do that I'll put this at 100%. Now let's actually see the cash flow minus the liabilities. We see that the cash flow guys is looking amazing. And by the looks of it, the assets minus liabilities is also looking good. But cash flow is what companies use to pay down their debts, not necessarily their assets. So let's actually do the cash flow year over year, the liabilities year over year, and see essentially if this is actually getting closer and closer to zero. It's pretty much is the cash flow outpacing their liabilities. And as you can see right here, currently they're at negative $5.5 billion. Now you're looking at this and you're like, everything's in the negatives. What I'm wanting to look for here is guys, is it at least getting closer and closer to zero? Now, as you can see right here, they did have a massive jump from five to four years ago, getting further into the red. And then even further that the following year, three years ago, but ever since three years ago, guys, they have been slowly bringing it back to zero. So. That's actually fairly interesting. Average cash flow minus the average liabilities, we get around negative $5.3 billion. So it's actually not too shabby, guys. Overall, I'm going to give this a fairly decent score of like 70%, maybe even like 75%, honestly, because they do have three years of at least this consistently going up, right? Well, at least two years, sorry, one here and then one here. Two years of at least going up and their cash flow is increasing. So we can pretty much assess that they may actually continue this into the future. So 75%, not, not too bad. And now looking at the shares outstanding, the most underrated of all the, the metrics, because this is the one that guys, companies tend to issue the most. And unfortunately, when a company issues shares, especially by the way, companies that do not pay out the dividend tend to issue a whole lot more shares because they're like, we don't care. I mean, people are going to keep buying our stock. So screw it. Let's just do it. Right. So the company guys, Adobe has been buying back shares a pretty good amount. So that's actually good. They are essentially giving you guys a bigger piece of the pie by doing nothing. Remember when I said in the beginning, if they don't pay out the dividend, we better see a pretty good share buyback. As you can see, it's not 
it's not really aggressive, but it's still a decrease and a fairly consistent decrease and a fairly consistent decrease at that. So I have to give them credit for that. We got five years ago, 491.3 million shares to today, 471 million shares. That is a decrease of 4.13% on the five year and 0.84% on the previous to the current year. This is looking at one year ago, 475 to 471 today. Guys, this is looking amazing. Not one year did they issue shares, not even by a little bit. Every single year, very, very consistently. It is absolutely amazing. I have to give this guys, well, you know what? I was gonna give it a 100%. I would like it to be a little bit more aggressive, but I like the consistency. I like to see consistency because this consistency is pretty much just telling me that they'll do this into the future as well. So for that reason, guys, I'm actually going to give this a 100%. Even though it's not aggressive, it's still very, very consistent, which makes the assumptions for the discounted free cash flow a whole lot easier to make. And now, guys, looking at the cash and equivalents, they currently hold 3.4 billion dollars with an average of 3.1 billion dollars. And actually, before we move on, I actually want to point out something, guys. Take a look at this. So as of today, they're at $3.4 billion. Looking at the current cash flow minus the liabilities at negative $5.6 billion, guys, they're almost there. They can pretty much cover, you know, a good chunk of this difference just with their cash and equivalent alone. So that's actually fairly good to see, honestly. And if we take a look at two years ago, they even have more money. So yeah, it's actually fairly good that with the cash on hand, they can pretty much pay down the rest of that cash flow minus liabilities just with the cash on hand alone. Now let's actually take a look at the overview of all the fundamentals and it looks amazing. Net income 75%, free cash flow 95%, revenue 100%, absolutely gorgeous. Assets minus liabilities 97%, cash flow minus liabilities 75%, shares outstanding 100%, for an overall gray guys of 91% monster absolute monster of a company oh my god the only issue here that i mainly see guys is castle minus liabilities and the net income that's about it that's honestly it aside from that 90 plus company oh my god that is absolutely amazing but is it the correct price to buy it at we're gonna find out right now so guys, let's come over here now to the discounted free cash flow just to make some assumptions. Low, medium, high using revenue growth, projected share buyback, and the required rate of return, which I like to keep flat at 10%. Now, I'm looking at the video that I made last time, and I'm seeing that, well, I put it for the revenue growth of 10%. For the low assumption, the median, I put it in at like 12%. And for the high one, I put it in at 14%. And then a 2, 3, 4% share buyback for each projected share buyback. I actually want to put exactly the same of this, guys. Except for the projected share buyback. I do want to change that up a little bit. So I think that I think that they're still going to be around the same. You know, 10, 10% for the revenue growth for the low assumption, 12 and 14. So let's actually go with that. So let's say 10% for the low one, 12% for the medium one, and 14% for the high one. Now for the predicted share buyback, I actually think that 4% is actually more equivalent to the medium one since that's usually what they have been doing within the past five years. Let's go with 3% for the low one, and for the high one, let's go with 5%. Now guys, we do get some target share prices, which by the way, hang on, full stop. Usually, when it comes to the revenue growth assumptions, guys, I like to come over here to the growth tab, looking at the forward one, and essentially coming up with my own assumption based off of the forward and the year over year. But seeing that I have done this before, and the fact that the economy is getting worse, inflation just came in at 8.3%, I think that, guys, people are going to prioritize food and rent, utilities, especially now that it's getting winter here in the United States. I think people are going to prioritize that over this, so... That's essentially why I kind of want to keep it at around the same as I had before, lower than that of the forward one that we just saw. So that's essentially that. Now, this actually gives us guys some target share prices. Not just for debt of 264, median assumption 285, and the high assumption it is $307. Now, adjusting for debt, this is why we take a look at the cash equivalents, and we also add the net debt when we add all these numbers. If the company has more debt than cash, then the value comes down. If the company has more cash than debt, then the value comes up. As you can see, it does come up, guys, by like almost $300. 
For the low assumption, now it is $535.46. Median, it is $577.34. And the high one, it is almost $622. Adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%. This puts me between the ranges of $455 to $509 for the low assumption, $490.74 to $450 for like the median assumption, and for the high assumption, it is $430 to like $491 for the high assumption. Guys, the current share price is $371. And by the way, it was heading up there to like the $400 mark. And even last time that I analyzed this company, I said, look, in accordance to the target share prices after debt, guys, this is an all out buy still. And it was heading towards this $400 mark, which essentially was my lowest assumption with the highest margin of safety. So I still believe that this company should be worth around like the $500 mark. And for all of those of you who say, oh, that will never happen. Guys, let me show you the 52 week high is $699. Yeah, uh, it already happened. So the fact that we're getting this at 371 and with the 52 week low of 346, and my target share prices are saying, you know, between 535 and 621 and, you know, 455 to 428 for the 15% margin of safety. Guys, I honestly believe that this company is a very, very good buy, especially seeing this weighted grade of 91%. That's very, very rare, guys. So as it currently stands, I still like this company. I think their fundamentals are beautiful. I absolutely love it. This is essentially what I'm giving this company for a target share price and i personally believe that at the current share price of 371 it is pretty much a bargain now does this mean that you automatically go buy it because i'm telling you absolutely not guys every investment is the present value of all future cash flow and this is not financial advice please have this calculator and make your own assumptions i said this in the previous video for today and i'm gonna say it again because it's something that i think people need to understand i am not here to do a full depth analysis of a company I'm not here to take a look at their 10K or their 8K or take a look at how many shares they're buying back in the future. I'm not here to do that, guys. I am here to show all of you guys the process. If you like the company, buy their fundamentals, buy their free cash flow, right? Buy their revenue, buy their shares buyback, etc. And if you come over here and you make some pretty basic assumptions from the past, and the numbers make sense to you, then you go further into the company, see what they're doing into the future, what they're planning, what their acquisitions are, what their projects are. Then you come back over here and you make further assumptions based off of what you read and if you like it or not. That is essentially the kind of process I'm trying to teach you guys. Does that mean that you're going to skip on companies that might go to the moon, right? Yes, but you're also going to weed out majority of the companies that are going to just flop. And that is essentially what you're trying to do. You're essentially trying to find companies like this, right? Companies that there is such divergence when it comes to their fundamentals and their price that you're like, this should not be worth $371. This should be worth like $577. Why is this worth this, right? And then if you like the fundamentals and you like what they're doing in the future, then you come back here and you do your own research if you like the company. I do this with the companies that I own. I pretty much know everything that's going on with them. I know why I like them, I know why I bought them, and I know what they're doing in the future as well. That's why I'm giving guys this calculator out for free, as well as my book value calculator, my reevaluation calculator, and my dividend tracking sheet, because I want you guys to be making your own assumptions. I want you guys to be making your own portfolio with your own target share prices. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, they're partners, right? They own Berkshire Hathaway together. And Warren Buffett's always saying, you ask me, to analyze you a stock, a company, and you ask Charlie to analyze the same company, we're going to come up with completely different numbers and completely different explanations as to why we chose that number. That's perfectly fine. The purpose is to have a process and to understand why you are investing in a company, not just invest in it because the graph is going up and it's, look at, and it's looking like it's gonna continue to go up. No guys, that's not how you wanna do things. I used to do it that way and I lost a ton of money. The process is the core of how you should invest. The does that mean you're going to be 100% right? No. To be a good investor, you just have to be right 60% of the time. So yeah, that's essentially why I'm giving out this calculators out for free, guys. Please make your own assumptions. I'm not here to, again, look into what the company's doing, seeing how many shares they're buying back, any of that stuff. I don't care about that stuff. If I like the company, the first thing I do is look at their fundamentals. If I like the fundamentals, make 
a basic assumption as into the future as to what they've done in the past. And then if that makes sense to the current share price, then I look further into the company and see, okay, if they're doing this, let's bring up the revenue by one or two points. Let's, okay, let's figure out what's this $2 billion share buyback? What's this of a percent of? Okay, it's like 2%. So let's bring the projected share up by like 2% and then see where your numbers lie. You do that for yourselves. I'm not going to do it for you. All in all, when it comes to this calculator, guys, all I'm asking for in return for giving them out for free is just help me grow my channel. Like, subscribe, comment. It really does help it with the algorithm on YouTube. Thank you for everybody who have commented who has recommended stocks i mean i just did funko pops earlier that was awesome i think the company is massively overpriced but the company is still pretty good you know so it is what it is and thank you everybody for commenting it really really does help and i have a list of a bunch of companies still to analyze so please bear with me uh, if yours has not shown up yet it, it is still in the work so again thank you all so much I really do appreciate it. And the best way that you can help my channel, guys, is like, subscribe, comment. It's free. And if you like this kind of content, if you like what I'm doing, that's really all I'm asking for. All in all, when it comes to Adobe, I think I said this last time. I said this the previous time, and I'm going to say it again. Banger. Absolute banger of a company. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great price to buy it now, even with that PE of 36.29. Remember what I said, just because the PE is high doesn't mean that it's not a good value right now, assuming that the revenue is increasing exponentially, and it is. So essentially, I think it's a great buy right now. It's looking like a great company, 91% overall grade, guys. Yeah, that's essentially my two cents. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help over the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And I will see everybody tomorrow for this earnings report for Adobe. So I will see you all then.